What well, gang on Carol on Jackpot Time coming at you December 8th, 2022. Hope everyone's having a great Thursday. It's all right up here in upstate South Carolina. Still raining again. Uh, it's been raining off and on pretty much for the past four or five days. I don't understand it. Um, it must be that global warming bullshit. Anyway, um, getting on to more important matters. First of all, I'm still dealing with the, um, you know, the decommitment of Uncle Lou for the uh, weekend thing. Not as bad today uh, as I was yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening. I have slowly started to get over it. Uh, you know, time heals all broken hearts. Time heals all wounds. And uh, eventually, you'll either get over it and get past it, or it'll eat you up inside. And I'm bound to determine that ain't going to eat me up inside. If you're eating up my insides, you're doing a heck of a lot of eating. You know what I'm saying? Because my inside is pretty big. My outside is pretty big, too. Getting on to more pertinent news, uh, it seems as if and no official announcement has been made yet. South Carolina, Shane Beamer uh, has uh, found his man. He has found his next offensive coordinator uh, in the gentleman of Joel Luggins, I believe is his name. I believe that's how we're going to pronounce it. It's the tight end coach currently. Uh, for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this hire. Now, it's not official yet, okay? So so don't quote me on anything. And, if, you know, if he ends up not getting the job, he ends up not being the guy that is hired, um, don't come back on this stupid video uh, in 12, 24 hours or whatever saying, it didn't age well. This didn't age. Oh, well, look at that. They didn't hire him. They hired Phil Bumblefunk and Mike Lala. No, this is the news at the current time, okay? So, <coughs> Agent Wells not in the question. Um, it's all but a done deal. When I'm reading over on the bigspur.com, this to me, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. And we'll talk here for a second about Dole, Dowel, Dole. I call him Dole for right now. What a damn name. Uh, first of all, he has actually been an offensive coordinator in the NFL uh, for quite a few seasons, from Route 2012 to 2018. And, and I'm getting, I'm, I, I have mixed reviews here on what he did in the NFL. He started out as just like, a, you know, an assistant, analyst, uh, you know, coffee fetcher, uh, pencil pusher, I guess. Uh, in the Tennessee Titans organization and worked himself up in 2012. He, to offensive coordinator uh, at the age of 33 at the time he was, 32, which is a pretty good, I mean, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Uh, and he didn't do so hot. He was there from 2012 to 13. He's also had stints as the OC for the Bears, um, the Jets, I believe, uh, maybe he worked for the Panthers a bit in that. Not sure. Um, I, I just, what, what I'm reading though about his stance as an NFL, off, oh, the Dolphins. Yeah, that's where he was at too. Yeah, so not, not really great franchises uh, that he's been OC at there. Not really like people known for uh, contending for Super Bowls and stuff. So, uh, you know, that's one thing, but, but uh, he didn't have a lot of success as an OC in the NFL. And, and I'm reading that he um, was, well, he, he, he was handed some bad situations. Well, the thing is, his handed bad situations didn't necessarily make them better, okay? It didn't make them any better. Uh, what's also, that's concerning, but what's not as concerning is, I mean, teams kept hiring him. Teams kept hiring him despite his... He was, like, unanimously voted in, like, 2017 or 18 as the worst offensive coordinator in the NFL. I didn't know they had such a superlative, uh, or they actually gave an award for it. Well, I mean, what is it? Is it a, is it a, a penis in the shape of a football, uh, like on a trophy or something, like, you know, the, the golden penis that we give away for, for finishing last in our contest? I'm not sure. Uh, that's Some of that's encouraging, but some of it's not. And then, so I've heard he's very well respected uh, on the Arkansas staff. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, like you know, a, a, a really important person there in the locker room, um, and a great recruiter. 
which is good. We need somebody who's a great recruiter. Okay, because I don't really know that Marcus Satterfield was exactly a great recruiter. Uh, I know Shane Beamer's a great recruiter. I think Justin Sepp is a great recruiter. I think Pete Limbo probably is a pretty good recruiter. Um, yeah, I think Clayton White and the guys on the defensive staff are pretty good recruiters. So we'll see what happens there. But this um, this Dole guy, uh, it was actually he played for Arkansas. Um, he was he's five foot six. <laughs> yeah, he's five foot six. So he's 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 you know he's gonna be like half the size of the people that he's coaching, which is that's fine. He's five foot six, and um, he was the quarterback uh, on the scout team for Arkansas. And it said that he ran the um, you know the opposing uh, team's offenses, and that he really picked apart the <laughs> defenses during. During scout team practice at Arkansas back in like them, uh, I don't know, 1999 and 2000. So what? He's five foot six, a hundred and nothing, a hundred and nothing, a hundred and. <laughs> Wait, this we're gonna hire Rudy for an offensive coordinator. We are hiring the Arkansas younger version of Rudy as offensive coordinator. Dear God. Um. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about this. Well, Shane Beamer, this is the first go round as a head coach. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to end for him. He made some pretty good hires the first time around. I think Pete Limbo was a really good hire. I think Clayton White was a really good hire, despite the fact that, you know, we've had some issues there. I think he's had some, you know, just problems with system lack of talent. Um, and, and you're going to have that. you got to build a roster back up. We'll, we'll must shut left this program in a shutter. Uh, there, I mean, there, if, if there was one thing that, that set this program back at least five to ten years, it was the hiring of Will Muschamp. I supported that man until I couldn't support him any longer. Uh, after the 2019 loss to UNC in the uh, – whatever it was, the season opener, I was done with him. I was done with the guy. I was off the boom bus officially. He was the worst head coach that I've ever seen. And he destroyed the program. Not only was he a bad coach, not only was he a bad in-game coach, he made poor in-game decisions. Um, he was a, he did not build the program at all, at all. So this deal with this Loggins guy, or Duggins guy, is... Loggins, Loggins. The deal with him, I think, is more or less that South Carolina is having to settle for something they really. I don't know if, if Shane Beamer likes him or not, if he wants him or not, or if it's, this is just the best that he can get or not. I've read up on him, and it said like, over the course of last offseason, like before last spring practice, so like March of this year was when this article was dated. It was from the on3sports.com that um, uh, Loggins was uh, – the, the, a bunch of the Arkansas assistant coaches and Sam Younger Pittman got a raise. Um, it was four of them that got raises. He was not one of the ones that got a raise. Um, I think he's, he said he makes about $400,000 a year at this point in time. Um, but it does say that um, Mark Stoops had been in contact with him uh, about their offensive coordinator position, but he chose to stay at Arkansas. Now, I mean, why would you choose to stay at Arkansas as a tight ends coach when, uh, you know, Mark Soups was interested in you as the offensive coordinator at Kentucky? So, I mean, obviously he didn't get the job, okay? So that's why he wasn't interested in it because they weren't interested in him. They uh, are lost interest in him. Maybe the interview didn't go so well. I don't know. He didn't, maybe didn't show up in a, in a nice crisp suit. Um, at any rate, I, I don't know about that. And, um, it's just, I, I saw that it said there, it said that Duggins, or Loggins, why do I keep messing this guy's name up? I'm just going to start calling him Ray Bob before long. No offense to the Ray Bob on the channel, but I mean, it would be easier. So Ray Bob sold him on the fact, Rudy, Rudy Bob, I'll call him Rudy Bob. Rudy Bob sold him on the fact that he runs a pro style offense. Dear God. 
no no spread concepts no creativity I, this feels to me and i'm still in line from somebody else that we just took a dump or no we just took a shower to wash off the stink of marcus siderfield and now we just got right out of the shower after being all nice fresh and clean towel dry and took a big old dump that's what it feels like because I, I i just don't see this being a good hire and I, this was going to be a pivotal hire for Shane Beamer. Um, th this could make or break his career uh, as head coach at South Carolina. And I don't think that he's gone out and knocked it out of the park. I also don't think that this is 110% Shane Beamer's fault. I, I think that he is, you know, I think the Dan Mullen thing probably didn't happen. Uh, I think the Kendall Bryles thing didn't happen. Uh, the whoever else, what, Garrett Riley, these other people that, well, he's actually coaching the playoffs, so, who, yeah, who knows about that, but uh, these other folks they wanted uh, that aren't going to happen, it's because of this right here. It's because of money. Um, they, they're, they're just not going to open up the purse strings uh, 110%. They are not going to take that wallet, hand it to Shane Beamer. They're not going to hand him the ATM card and say, here you go, ATM Shane, go get out as much as you need and do what you need to. It's just not happening. It's just not. So we're left with, uh, you know, instead of being able to go shop at Publix, we got to go shop um, at, at, the, 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 at the bargain basement, grocery store. Uh, and yeah, it, it is what it is. And the bargain basement grocery store don't have a good selection. So, I, I, I'm done talking about it. I will see how how uh, Rudy Bob works out. This may be a great hire, but I just I haven't seen a lot of ex NFL people that didn't make it uh, come to college and succeed. I mean, he's, he's only been uh, in college as a coach for two seasons, and yet I mean that's great that he's respected over at Arkansas. Yeah, a lot, but he's an Arkansas alum. I mean, he tore up the practice field there in the early 2000s for whoever was the coach there at the time. I guess it would have been Houston Nutt, maybe. I don't know. I, I just, I, I have a bad feeling about this, that Shane Beamer's uh, shot himself in the foot, and um, I, we're, we're, you know, we, we've, we've had a, a couple of kids hit the transfer portal already. Today you saw tight end Travion Kenyon announce that he's stepping away from football. Uh, the game that he's played since he was four years old. I don't know what's wrong with him. I hope the guy's not sick. I hope it's not something wrong with him because that's just really strange. But um, this hire, um, if it goes through, it's just another one of those things. If you're a big old game cop like I am, you just – you're going to have to accept it. We're going to have to give him a chance and and then formulate our own opinion. If he goes through half of a season, um, uh, calling a bunch of plays like Satterfield did and, and running a vanilla wet fart offense uh, that uses no creativity, doesn't use the playmakers, uh, doesn't put points on the board, um, then we're we're headed down the wrong track. We we honestly are. And I can sit here and, and do the all the thumping and the making fun of Clemson and the Tennessee thing and all this, that, and the other. You know, we know Shane Beamer was calling those plays against uh, both those teams. Marcus Satterfield was not doing that. Why anybody would want this man as an offensive coordinator, I don't know. Uh, I think Matt Rule, I mean, to be an NFL coach, I think you've got to be kind of smart. Well, he seems to be kind of a dumbass because he's taking him on a brand new staff um, at a school that uh, has been downtrodden for years. Don't really think that's the best hire either, but you know, thank God he's out of our hair. Now maybe we've got another one on our hands. I, I just don't know. I, I don't know what to think anymore. Um, this is not like as stupid as the Dabo hires of his – quarterbacks coach who we like promoting people from within and thinking that that's going to work which hasn't worked for him and now Shane Beamer's going out and and hiring just these uh, these Johnny come late it's almost like you remember how back in the day you used to go into classified ads and look for a job 
this is back before in, Indeed online and, you know, before every company had a careers website and all that stuff. But if you was looking for a job and, and, and you get kind of ticked off where you're at, then you'd go get your paper out, get the classifieds out, and you start looking in the employment section. It, it, it's almost like this guy had like a three, one of the little cheap three-line ads in the classified employment section there, seeking job. Uh, offensive guru or coordinator uh, not making enough money with yes sir so seeking at least uh, $800,000 per year to ruin offense Rudy Bob